Hello there. Uh, this video will be divided in uh, two parts. Uh, in first part it will be just me ranting about uh, knowledge versus skill and in the second part I will show you this uh, Chess King app uh, which I think is a great app uh, for you to train and uh, to increase your chess skill. So uh, let's start from the first part uh, regarding uh, knowledge versus skill. I know I have been talking about this many, many times and I'm, uh, I will probably repeat myself again. But I think that this subject is uh, so important uh, that uh, it deserves to be said uh, repeatedly. So uh, for everything you do, you need to, first of all, to have a knowledge how to do stuff. And then you need to uh, have skill and skill means uh, the ability to apply the knowledge and actually do stuff. So it, it goes for everything. So for example, in sports, let's take uh, tennis for example. So in order to play tennis you need to have certain knowledge. You need to, to know how to properly perform your backhand, your forehand, your serving. You need to know some uh, tennis theory. You need to know um, when in principle it is best time to go out on the net, when uh, it is uh, best to play from the baseline and, and so on and so on. So you, you need to have some kind of knowledge uh, to be able to, uh, to play tennis. And uh, this knowledge can be acquired in uh, many different ways. You can acquire it from a book maybe, maybe you can watch some YouTube videos and, and see how to, how to uh, properly uh, play tennis. Or you, you could have an instructor who will uh, teach you all these things. But then, uh, once you have the knowledge, the second uh, phase is the skill. So you need to apply that knowledge and uh, go out, play tennis, practice, uh, hit the ball against the wall a million times and so on. And then you will uh, acquire a skill. And uh, if you compare two tennis players, uh, the better player is the one who has better skill. All tennis players in the world uh, have the same knowledge. They, they know all this stuff. They know all the basics. They know all the chess... Uh, sorry, all the tennis theory and and so on. But um, when it comes to skill, well, they, they uh, differ uh, among each other. Uh, some uh, tennis players are better in applying uh, the knowledge that they have uh, during the match and some are um, less good. So uh, this is when it comes to sports. When it comes to, to academic di disciplines, it's the same. So, for example, I'm a physicist by training, and uh, when I was a student, uh, one of my favorite subjects was uh, classical electrodynamics. It was a course in, in theoretical physics, uh, so theoretical electrodynamics. And um, I, I have, to, have to say that I very much enjoyed the, the theory part of, of, the, of the, this, this course, uh, this uh, subject uh, when I was uh, learning. So, I learned about Maxwell equations, I learned about Gauss law, I learned about... Uh, you know, Faraday laws, laws uh, Lorentz force, and so on. And it's um, very uh, intellectually, very really, uh, rewarding. So to really uh, learn how the electromagnetic fields work, how they interact with, it, with each other, how the, the electromagnetic uh, waves are formed, how radiation works, and so on. And, uh, well, Maxwell equations are like a, a crown of all classical electrodynamics. And it's really great to re read and to learn about this. But then there comes a moment when you uh, read about all this theory and you learn about this and it's very, you, you, you feel very good because you, you know all this stuff. And then it comes to problem when you have to face the truth. And the truth is faced when you take a problem book, book of problems, and uh, you need to solve a concrete problem. And then you realize that uh, all your theoretical knowledge is not enough uh, because you, you don't even know where to start when you, when you read the problem. So then you, you need to spend hours, hours, hundreds of hours by solving problems and uh, learning to apply what you already know. So you, you know your theory, you know your Maxwell equations, but you need to now to apply them in the, in the real problems, concrete problems, in order to, to solve them. So this problem-solving skill is separate from uh, theoretical knowledge. And, um, well, I would say in case of physics, it's like 20% uh, uh, theory and... Uh, 80% is problem solving if you want to become a good uh, physicist. Same goes for ma mathematics and, and uh, well, like I said, all, all things you, you do in life. So it also applies to chess. In order to play chess well, you need to have certain knowledge. You need to know your principles. You need to know opening principles. You need to know basic uh, strategical principles. You have to know uh, why it is important to uh, seize the open file. What is an outpost? What is good and bad bishop? You need to know some endgame techniques. You need to know how to play with uh, king and pawn uh, against king, for example, and many many other techniques. Um, you need to know opening principles. You need to know that you are supposed to play in the center, that you should uh, keep your king safe, that you should develop your pieces. 
You should know about pieces activity. What does it mean to have an active piece and how to make your piece active and so forth and so forth. So you, you need to have a certain knowledge. But uh, this knowledge without skill uh, will not make you a good uh, chess player. So how to acquire knowledge, first of all? It's very, it's easy. I mean, it's easy uh, in the in the sense that it's, it's uh, very ac accessible. So um, you apply knowledge by reading books, by watching videos, watching video courses and so on. And in fact, uh, most of the commercial products which are available are aimed at uh, increasing your knowledge. So I'm talking about different courses, uh, books, uh, video courses, you, you know there is plenty, plenty of stuff out there and uh, many, many, I, I mean almost all of these commercial uh, products are aimed at increasing your knowledge. And uh, if I would to, to draw some parallel with academic disciplines, I would say that uh, probably it's uh, like in physics, so it's 20% knowledge and 80% skill. So all these uh, products which you buy and which you consume, they just increase your knowledge. And what about skill, this 80% of, of, of the chess? Because, um, I mean, if you look at chess, there is not actually so much knowledge. You can read some uh, books like Simple Chess and uh, uh, watch John Bartholomew play uh, playlists and uh, just watch him play low related players and pretty much this is this is the knowledge you need to go up to, I don't know, uh, 2200. So th there, is, there is not so much knowledge in, in chess and um, uh, people stuck to piling knowledge because it's, it's easier. Um, it's easier because it doesn't require a great mental effort. So you can uh, read, for example, you, 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 you read a book, if you, if you like reading books, you, you take a book, you take a board, you read, for example, if you read Silman, it's a very nice written book and you enjoy reading it because this is this intellectual pleasure which uh, you, you get by learning new, new things. And um, you, you read the book, you play the moves and uh, you, 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 feel, you feel nice, you, you don't have a headache after, after this. Um, also, when you watch some uh, video courses or, uh, or YouTube videos, it, it's nice. You, you watch, you learn something. Oh, this is nice. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is a, this is genius. And the, the, it's it's a nice experience, and uh, it doesn't give you headache. So people tend to um, overemphasize knowledge over skill. Okay, but how about skill? How how is skill acquired? Skill is acquired uh, is acquired by uh, by, by uh, there there are two basic ways. One is solving problems. This is what you can do at home, and the another one is playing, and by playing I mean playing a long, uh, serious, uh, long games. So long games in which you can uh, think, in which you can assess the position, in which you have uh, time to uh, calculate, and uh, in which you put your your effort. So if your head doesn't hurt after playing a chess game, it's 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 not the game I'm talking about. So I'm talking about game in which you feel exhausted after after you play the game. So this is one way, and the another way is uh, solving problems. So um, and this is how you how you acquire skill. And 80% of your time should be solving problems. I'm not talking just about tactics. Of course, I do think the tactics are the most important thing for an adult improver, but I'm not uh, talking about just solving tactics, I'm talking about solving uh, any kind of problems. So for example, uh, Yusupo books here, I, I made a review recently about Yusupo books. So every chapter uh, has uh, 12 problems which you, you need to solve. And they're not just tactical problems, they're positional problems, problems from the opening, how to continue opening, end game problems, end game strategy problems, and so on. But the, problem, the point is that there are problems and how you should uh, solve problems, how you should address them. You, you shouldn't hurry. You need to put, for example, if you are if you are working with useful books, this is what what he says in in the introduction of his books. You should put put the the position on the board. Take at least five minutes just to get familiar with the position, and then try solving. Uh, start solving the position using pen and uh, paper, and then write down all the variations, everything you see in the position. You, you you write it down, and then you go to the next one. And then to the next one, to the next one, and then you solve all twelve. Then you go to the solutions and you check your your uh, your solutions with the solutions in the book. So this is um, the way to to really um, try to understand uh, the position. So not the quick way. Okay, I am looking at the position. Oh, this could be the move. Yeah, it looks nice. Let, let, let's look at the solutions. Then you go and look at the solutions and say. Oh, oh, it's not that move, it's the other one. Yeah, but, but I, I would play I, I would play this anyway, so yeah, it's fine. So not like this. So just uh, 
uh, you need to be honest with yourself and uh, to really with pen and paper solve uh, the position through the end. So this is the way how, for example, useful books are, are supposed to be read. And this is how, how you in increase your skill by uh, just uh, giving you, uh, pushing yourself to the edge and uh, trying to, to solve the position uh, through the end. And uh, you will know that you are uh, progressing in, in, in this way when you, when you have a headache. So if after a chess training session, which you have, you have a headache and you fear, uh, feel tired, then this means that you, you, you pushed your uh, limit and um, you, you, you really tried to, uh, to go one step further in increasing your, your skill. Okay, so um, I will now switch to the second part of this video. I, I mentioned the use of books as an example. I know uh, many of you uh, prefer to do uh, stuff on the computer. Um, I prefer bo uh, books and the board because I'm a software engineer and uh, I don't like staring at the screen too much. But uh, I also do use uh, chess applications, especially if they are very good. And uh, this uh, Chess King app, which I will, uh, I'm about to show you, is... Uh, something which I, I knew that it existed before, but I never uh, give it a real chance. And now I finally did give it a chance and I'm uh, really delighted with what I, what I found out. So uh, let me show you this uh, app uh, in which I think it's a great way to increase your uh, chess skill. Okay, so uh, here it is. I will put the link below. Um, just to make a small disclaimer, uh, this is not an uh, ad advert advertisement. So I'm not advertising the product. I, I'm not in, a, in any way affiliated with, uh, with, this, uh, with this site and I'm not paid to, to uh, advertise uh, uh, this site. I really think it's a, it's a great uh, learning, uh, learning resource like I, I did on uh, Chessable and, uh, and so on. So uh, I, 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 don't, I don't get anything from promoting this. Okay, so um, this is the site. I will link. Uh, link. Uh, I, I will put the link below. And uh, they also have the application for uh, iPhone, for Android phone. So you can use it uh, on on this web uh, interface, or you can install it on your uh, smartphone or on uh, or on your tablet. Okay. So let me first show you the uh, the site. I will just move remove my face for a moment. So as you can see, they have uh, many courses here from middle game, end game. Uh, Strategy opening tactics, but uh, tactics is the is the most uh, most important. So uh, the the course I I want you to try is this City Art uh, 4.0. So if you if you remember um, my um, review of uh, Michael De Lamaza's book, uh, he recommends City Art, but I think it was a 3.0 at at his time, and it was uh, in the form of PC uh, app. So uh, it is a little different, but um, this is the this is the software uh, he he also recommends. So I wanted to give uh, this famous software a try, and uh, this software I think is one of the first and one of the most famous regarding tactics. So this is, for example, one um, very good uh, very good course, and there are also uh, of course some other. Okay, so let let me let me show you what I like about this uh, this page. Uh, and the, this this application, uh, and you can also see the well. The, the price is not. You need to buy these courses, and the, the price is not so expensive. I think this city art is like seven dollars, and games is like four dollars or, or something like this. Okay, so let me let me show you. Uh, I have purchased two two courses. I'm now working on the two courses. So let me show you uh, city art and why why do I like it so much? Well, first of all, you can see that there are more than two thousand uh, puzzles to solve. So this is a very, a very, very rich, uh, very rich course, and um, they they are um, arranged by teams, if you want by team or by difficulty, if if you want to to have um, uh, different uh, different teams, but uh, arranged by difficulty. So I I did this uh, by by difficulty. Okay, and now you can go. For example, uh, let me show you one puzzle. So let's let's go to this easy. Okay, and uh, I have to say that uh, this course is made by uh, um, uh, from the from the book, a very famous. I think it's Block, uh, Russian international master and famous coach. So this is uh, uh, these puzzles are composed uh, are humanly humanly composed, and this is also um, very important. I, I I will spend just a minute uh, talking about this. So why why 
Why is it important to have puzzles which are uh, humanly composed? Uh, because um, when, when you solve puzzles on, uh, on, on some servers, let's say on Leeches or Chess.com or, or even uh, Chess Tempo, these puzzles are composed by the engines and they are composed in, the, in a very simple uh, manner. So uh, the engine finds the position from the, some online game in which uh, one move gives you advantage plus three and uh, other moves don't. And, and this is the puzzle, so you need to find uh, the move. And uh, these moves are not uh, meant to be uh, instructive or they don't have some particular uh, geometrical motive or uh, they don't have some point in which they want to teach you something. It's just a real real game position and uh, one move uh, one move wins. And uh, most of the times this move can be very awkward because those are the so-called engine moves which uh, from the human perspective are not uh, likely uh, to happen or to be noticed. So they don't have this instructive value. I mean, they are useful, of course, if you go on and solve uh, 100 uh, Leech's puzzles, it's useful, you will increase your board vision. But they don't have this uh, instructive, um, instructive value like the puzzles which are composed by an experienced coach. So these puzzles in, in this CT art uh, are composed by experienced Russian coach who uh, spent like 20 years co composing these, uh, these puzzles, not, not composing, but uh, selecting the puzzles and every puzzle has some uh, some point and uh, uh, it, it it will teach you something they have uh, different uh, geometrical motifs and and so on so they are carefully selected uh, for your instruction and this is why i think uh, solving puzzles which are humanly composed and selected uh, will give you much more worth than uh, solving puzzles which are uh, created by the engine okay that being said let me let me show you just one one puzzle. Which uh, how how does this uh, this work? Okay, so for example, let's look at this puzzle. If you want to make this uh, training session, then uh, please uh, pause the video and uh, well try to uh, try to solve the puzzle. It it says here it's uh, play to win, so you, you know that you are supposed to win and uh, you are white. So okay, you can pause the video if you want now. Okay, I hope you you found. Uh, the solution. So, um, let's see. Uh, the idea is, if, if you give, I, I cannot draw arrows here, unfortunately, so I have to just pick the coordinates, uh, try, try to follow up. So, if we play um, Queen H7 is a move which uh, which kind of looks uh, inviting, but uh, the problem is that you, you don't have um, any continuation after a king uh, escapes, for example, on f8, you can give one more check to h8, king can go, for example, to e7, and you don't have any more checks because this uh, g7 uh, pawn is uh, guarded by the knight. So uh, the motive here is the removal of the, of the defender, so you, you need to remove the knight, and then once you remove the knight, then you can uh, capture on g7 and uh, maybe win the queen because um, you, you, will, you will make this uh, skewer uh, tactics. So you can try to, to maybe to take the, the knight with the rook right away, but uh, well, it doesn't work because your opponent has the counterplay. And this is also a very important point and very important feature of this application is that it forces you to see the opponent's counterplay. So if you, if you take the knight, your opponent will just uh, uh, checkmate you with uh, queen to h1. So you cannot take the knight immediately. And uh, okay, be before we go on and uh, solve this uh, this problem, uh, let let me talk about counterplay uh, some more. In the real game, if this was a real game, you have to be aware of your opponent's counterplay, uh, because when you're solving tactics, then you know it's your turn and you know there is a winning uh, forcing uh, sequence of moves, and you are just focusing on your plans. But if you have this mentality in the real game, you will lose many games. I know because I lost many games. When you're focused on your, your plan, your moves, your tactics, um, your possibilities, and you forgot uh, about uh, your, your opponent's uh, plans, you, you, will, you will get lost. So you also need uh, to be aware of your, uh, your opponent's counterplay. So if it was his move, what, what, uh, what would he play? So you can also pause the video now and uh, try to solve this for black. So uh, try to see if uh, it is black's turn to move what would black black play? What is the best move from black? Okay, you can pause the video and try to think about this as well.
Okay, I hope you, you paused the video and uh, found the solution, but let's now go back to the, to, the, to the white side. So we saw that we need to remove this defender, knight on f5, but uh, we, can do, we cannot do this immediately because he has a uh, mate, uh, queen h1 mate. So maybe we can first give the check on h7 with our queen, and then when the king moves, then we can remove the defender with check, with tempo. And so you need to spend some time calculating, you can see that this is the solution. So you, you give check, and now king moves, and now I will remove the defender, but with check, with tempo. And now I can uh, check, and this g7, because I have removed defender, I can take g7, and after then, that I can just win the queen, and the exercise is solved. But this is not the end, so the exercise is solved from the white part. And now what I like really uh, about this application is that you get offered to play out counterplay. You can also play with the computer if you want to practice. Um, you can go, you can play again, of course, you can go to the next, but uh, you, you can also play the counterplay. So you click play the counterplay. Now it's the same puzzle, but it's black to move. And ideally, you should also already know the solution, because if you have, if you have analyzed your, your position when you were white, you should be, if you did a good analysis, you should be aware of the best move for black. So this should also be solved in your head. And uh, this is one habit uh, you should get, and I have to admit that I don't have this habit. So whenever I click uh, play counterplay, I, I need to think again like like it's completely new puzzle. But um, this this is something to to be work on. So uh, here the idea is uh, a fork. So you, you're you're looking at the forcing moves. So the forcing move is a rook h1 a check, and after then uh, knight takes uh, g3 and uh, you, you win the queen. So. This is counterplay. Check. Yeah, and this is it. Okay, and also, of course, you, you have some some rating um, rating points uh, ju just to keep you keep you motivated to see uh, your your progress when you solve uh, correctly. You get some rating points when you don't, uh, and then you you lose rating points and so on. Because I, I already solved this puzzle, I don't have any any rating. So this is one thing I like about this uh, uh, this. Uh, App. Uh, another thing is I'll now go to the next puzzle to show you another feature. Okay, so this one is a little more uh, difficult. So it's white. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's black turn, and uh, it says you have mate in three here. So try to find mate in three, or just 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 to try to find the winning continuation for black. So. Pause the video and try to find the winning continuation for black. Okay, so uh, I hope you you did you did find it. But let let's say that you you make a mistake. Let's say that you think that the best move is uh, knight to d3. You have some uh, ideas of mating maybe to on b2 or something like. This. So so you play a wrong move. So what happens? He will tell you this is a blunder and he will animate you the the like continuation so you can see why this is a blunder. And you can see also on the right side right side of the screen, so here you can see that you, you can you can play this and you can uh, you can analyze why, why why this was a mistake. Okay, so after the first attempt, uh, if you solve this um, incorrectly, he's giving you some hints. So he's uh, giving you some arrows, so the first attempt you failed, so in the second attempt you have some uh, some hints, so he's highlight highlighting uh, Sorry, this doesn't work. So he's highlighting which pieces you should be focused on and uh, which diagonals, which uh, lines is, is the focus here. Okay, and let's say that you still you still got it wrong. Let's say that you try rook to d2. And again, he will animate that and he will show you why this is wrong. And you can analyze because you have on the right screen. Okay, so this is wrong. So you click continue again. And now when you, when you solve two times wrongly, he's uh, offering you to solve subtask. And this is very, very, very nice feature. So you click solve subtask, and now he's giving you the motive you should be looking for in your game, but in a very simplified uh, environment. So very few pieces, and you can see now, okay, this is subtask, and this is uh, the mate with uh, bishop and the knight. So uh, knight a3 is a checkmate. Okay, so you you solve the subtask, and now you know, okay, this is the motive I should be looking for in my puzzle. So you go return to task. And now you know, okay, so these, these two guys, so this bishop and the knight, they are supposed to deliver checkmate. 
And now, when you know what motive are you looking for, it's easy to find the solution. The solution is to sacrifice the queen, and now uh, give a double check. So he has to move the king. And uh, now, like you saw in the subtask, you just uh, deliver checkmate. Okay, so this is uh, this is a great thing. In is when you first you, you need to take to take time. So don't uh, don't play moves until you 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 calculated all the all the variations. So don't just try. Okay, this looks nice. So let's let's try to play this and uh, let let's try to. Let's hope that it will work out. So this is not a good way to, to solve tactics. You need to uh, be sure that you have calculated all the variations, sub variations, and and so on. Um, and if you fail, then you have these arrows, which which is like a tip. And if you still fail, then you have subtask in which you can uh, see see the motive. Uh, let, let's play the, out the counterplay here. So you should be. Uh, looking at the counterplay before you played your move, but usually uh, you don't because it's in your nature to, to look at your moves first. So uh, the counterplay here is, you can see that uh, queen, if uh, queen takes f7, it will be a mate very soon. So you need to move, remove the defender of f7. So you take the knight, so first remove the defender of f7 and then give a uh, check to f7 and then checkmate here. So this is the, the counterplay. And uh, also, if there are uh, different uh, different uh, possible responses by your opponent, you will have to play all the variations. In these two examples, uh, both were forcing, so there, there were not, not some different variations, but I, I will show you this in the, another course. Okay, so let me show you another course which I uh, like very much. This is this um, endgame studies. Just endings for beginners, and also keep in mind this is this is uh, made from Russian books, from Soviet books, and uh, when Soviet says beginner, it's uh, like <laughs> I don't know 21, 2200 player. So when it says for beginners, it's uh, it's not for beginners in our sense of the word. So a Russian beginner is a different category. So let me show you this. Uh, this course, there is theory and there is practice. This is this is what I like. So theory is just you just go over our positions and there is text and he he explains you um, what, what what is going on. And okay, you, you can go through theory if you want. I I know most most of this theory, so I I didn't want to go through theory. I wanted to practice. So you go to practice and you have pawn endings, rook and rook endings, pawn endings, all kind of endings, and you can you can just practice them. So let me let me show you. For example, uh, there is this nice puzzle. Uh, I think it's pawn against pawn. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is the same. Um, the same idea is uh, you. You should. Uh, you are. You are playing. Uh, it's your turn. You are playing uh, uh, the moves, but you also have to play all the sub variations. It's like in in tactics. If if there are several uh, responses from your opponent, you have to play all, all variations. And uh, let's see. I like this puzzle. Uh, or not this one. Okay, this is the one. And also you can see that here it says easy. And yeah, it's easy if you are a Russian schoolboy uh, rated 2100. So this easy is uh, <laughs> is not really easy. So okay, uh, let's uh, let me show you this uh, this puzzle. So it's um, white to play. So what would you play here? You can pause the video and you can uh, try to solve this position. Okay, so if you are playing to win, you cannot afford to lose this pawn. So you need to naturally push the pawn. Now he plays uh, king to d6. You, if you now push the pawn, he will play uh, king to e7 and uh, he will win the pawn. So you need to stick around. So you play uh, king to e4. Now, okay, now you see the variant. So yeah, uh, the best move here is uh, the best defense is king to d7, but he doesn't have to play the best defense. He can play something else. So you can, you can click see the variant. And now, what if he plays e5? And uh, this is the moment uh, in which I think it's very, very good for uh, endings. Because when you, you learn theoretical endings, usually you learn the how to deal with the best response. And uh, humans usually don't make the best response. And then, then you, you can get into trouble. This is most often when you teach, uh, when you learn uh, positions like uh, Lucina or Philidor. So, you, you, for example, Lucina, you have this building the bridge technique. And, uh, well, it works if your opponent plays the best defensive moves. 
then you get to bring the bridge, uh, build the bridge and uh, promote the pawn. But uh, many times your opponents, they either don't know uh, to play best defense or they want to confuse you and they play moves which are not uh, the, the theoretical moves just to, to, to put you off guard. And then I have so uh, many times that uh, when uh, the opponent plays some uh, defensive move which is not the best defense, uh, for example against the, the, the Lucina position, um, then the players get confused and they still want to be, build a bridge although they can promote in two moves or something like this. So uh, this is a very good feature that they force you to play all the, all the variations. You cannot just um, uh, know uh, to play against the best defense but you're also against all, all other variations. Okay. So let's bring up our king. This is the technique. Now he pushes the pawn. Okay, and now I have to think again about f7, but f7 will not work because f7, king e7. And then by the time I bring my king up, he can already promote. So I, I have to bring my king up immediately. Okay, he pushes the pawn and now I can play f7. If he goes here, yeah, I, now I just I'm just supporting my pawn, and it will promote the next move with the check, and he will not have time to promote, and uh, I will uh, eventually win, win his pawn and win. So this is one variation. Now go continue. Now we play variation. We are going back to the main variation when he plays uh, king to d7. Okay, what now? Well, we are bringing up our king. I think e5. Okay, he goes here, and now this is the best defense, king d8. But there is also the variation. So you have click variation, so let's say that he plays king to e8. Okay, now you can just take the pawn because you are taking the opposition. The position here is very important and now it's just pushing the pawn and you are just promoting. He goes to g7, you go king e7 and you just promote. Okay, let's go back to the main variation, d8. And now if you want to take the pawn it will be a mistake, it will be a draw because he will take the opposition. So you don't take the pawn here but you take the opposition. And now when he moves, you take the opposition and now it's just a win. Okay, so this is, and now you can see here how many variations there are on the, on the right side. So this is uh, just a demonstration how uh, this, this app really plays um, many, many different variations and uh, you, you, need, you need to know how to uh, how to address all the variations. And this is a very nice, this is almost like work, working with a coach in which, uh, for example, when a coach uh, teaches you Lucina, he will play uh, many, many different, uh, different moves. He will not play just the best defensive moves and then you'll have to think uh, for your own for every variation. And also, if you want to practice the defense, you can uh, just, uh, you know, play this position against computer, you can play uh, as as black, for example, and you can uh, try to, to practice uh, your, your defensive skill or, or whatever. Okay. So this is it for, for this video. I wanted to, to recommend you this app. So, uh, and I also want to motivate you to try to, uh, to work on your skill more. So take the position, take your time, think about the position and uh, try to solve it. And you, you don't have to solve, if you're losing, uh, using, for example, this uh, CT art, which I have just shown you, you don't have to solve uh, 20 puzzles or 10 puzzles a day. You, you, you can solve two puzzles or three puzzles a day, but really try to understand them and spend 20 minutes per puzzle if you need, half an hour per puzzle if you need, if you need to. But just work hard on, on your calculation and try to really see. And after you, you think you, you have the solution, then play all the variants, uh, play, uh, counterplay, and to really try to uh, squeeze out as much as you can uh, from the position. And this is how you, you increase your skill, and uh, this is how you uh, you improve the proven chess. And this is hard work. This is not uh, pleasant uh, reading Silman's book or uh, watching Jorba Toromius play. This is a really, really hard work. And, uh, well, like I said, uh, when your head uh, starts to ache, uh, this is a good sign. This means that you are really uh, improving your, your skill. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching the video. Thank you for uh, very much for sticking with me uh, to the end of the video. I hope you, you did stick to the end. And uh, I think this is one of the uh, important, uh, one of the more important videos I've made in, uh, in the last uh, period. So uh, thanks again for watching. If you like the video, click the like button, uh, leave the comment below, subscribe to my channel, or share the video around. 
and uh, I will see you soon uh, with more chess, of course. Cheers.